Today, we're going to be looking at the rebirth of an operating system that was once expected to change the world, but unfortunately, never did. Now, once upon a time, back in the late 1980s, Microsoft helped to develop a new operating system platform that was a direct competitor to Windows, and something which many people believed could actually become the new default OS for PCs. And the team who gave us the original hardware and software for the PC platform, IBM and Microsoft, teamed up to release Operating System 2, or OS2, as it was abbreviated. Although very soon after development started, seeing it as a competitor to their Windows 3.1 platform and not being able to reach an agreement on how to market it, Microsoft dropped out, leaving OS2 in the hands of IBM. And OS2 offered some very nice features for the time. By the time OS2 Warp was released in 1995, it gave you excellent compatibility with DOS and Windows 3.1 applications. And in fact, in reviews, it was often referred to as a better DOS than DOS and a better Windows than Windows. After an estimated $990 million a year was spent on development, OS2 just couldn't topple the Microsoft dominance and at its peak, it never reached higher than a 5% market share of PC operating systems. And despite finding uses in embedded applications such as ATMs, OS2 was phased out by IBM by the mid-2000s. In 2001, a spin-off operating system known as Ecom Station was developed by a group called Serenity Systems, with the aim of allowing OS2 applications to run on more modern hardware. And although Ecom Station appears to be still on sale at the time of recording this video, financial hardships mean that it hasn't been updated for a decade now. And there have been several user petitions for IBM to open source OS2, but this is something that IBM have continually refused to do, probably due to the fact that it contains third-party code from Microsoft, as well as, apparently, quite interestingly, from Commodore. Now, according to legend, IBM did a technology transfer with Commodore, allowing them to use their Rex scripting language from OS2 in Amiga OS, in return for using some of the Amiga technology for OS2 version 2.0 and above. At least that's according to several sources I've read online. But I must admit, I can't see any of the Amiga technology in OS2 or Arca OS at a glance. Step forward to 2015, and a new OS2 derived operating system arrived, originally known as Blue Lion, and later renamed Arca OS. Now, Arca OS is a closed source commercial operating system that aims to bring OS2 into the 21st century. And it can run legacy 16 and 32 bit OS2 applications, 16 bit Windows apps, DOS programs, Rec scripts, and lots more as well. And it brings more modern benefits, such as large disk support, multi-core support, and it can access up to four gigabytes of RAM. And just to clarify, this is a paid for commercial operating system with, at the time of recording this video, no free or demo version available, and a personal license will cost you $129. But what can you do with it in 2021, and how well does it run? Well, I just want to give a big thank you to the Arca OS team, who actually supplied me with a review copy of the OS for this video. But just to clarify, it's not a paid for or sponsored video. They were just kind enough to send me a copy of it to try out. And beyond that, I'm able to give my complete honest opinions on it. So I'm installing Arca OS on a pretty standard PC, a Fujitsu Esprimo Pentium dual core machine running at 2.8 gigahertz with four gigabytes of RAM, a 320 gigabyte hard disk in here. This machine is around 10 years old and was originally sold with Windows 7. So I've burned the Arca OS image to a DVD-R and the installer is very straightforward. Now you boot from the disk. Originally you're asked to select your font size, which for this video, I've increased it to make it more visible on the video. You get your keyboard options in there as well. And you can even change the mouse to be left or right handed. So on the first screen, we do get some very nice accessibility options here. And then you get the multi-page terms and conditions, which of course, we're gonna read in depth before continuing. And then you need to select the volume you want to install Arca OS on. Now, as I mentioned, I've got a hard disk in here that currently has Windows 7 installed, but I'm happy to overwrite that with a single volume using the default options. And then it will gather information about the drive. 
Now at this stage, it warned me that there are some problems with the disk layout. So I select fix problems and it asks me to give the machine a reboot. And we do that with a control alt delete from the keyboard and then it will boot from the disk again. We run through the accessibility options and uh, skip past the T's and C's. And then I try the disk setup again. Now at this stage, it can't actually see any of my drives in the target volumes list. And if I go to manage partitions, it tells me that the drive is corrupt. So I tried to create a volume on the disk, a standard bootable volume, but unfortunately, Try as I might, I couldn't figure out how to format the drive or see any option to do it from the installer. Now, I was looking for about 10 to 15 minutes, and after a bit of Googling and checking forums, people suggested to me that I simply format the drive if I've got an existing Windows partition on there, as there doesn't appear to be a way to erase it properly. So I downloaded the free version of a program called DFC, which is a bootable application that can manage drives from this very minimal interface. And from here, I was able to delete the Windows 7 NTFS partition. And then booting into the Arca OS installer again, I was able to select the drive and run through the rest of the installer. So a bit of a hurdle there. Obviously, if you're installing it to a new drive with nothing pre-installed, that probably won't be an issue, but it's worth knowing if you're overwriting an old Windows install. And next, we get a very nice hardware overview screen showing the system and recognized attached devices and drivers. And I was quite impressed to see that Arca OS actually found my network adapter straight away and automatically installed the relevant driver. And after that, the installer does its own thing. This part took around 15 minutes to complete as it copied over all the required files from the DVD-R. And during the install process, we get a couple of reboots before we land on the Arca OS desktop for the very first time. So next, we'll explore the bundled applications in Arca OS. We'll test out running some older OS2 programs on here. And how well does it run Windows 3.1 and DOS programs and games? All of that coming up in just a minute. And just before we jump into that, I wanted to take a quick moment to give a big thank you to this video sponsor, my wonderful friends at Readly. Now, I've been a fan of technology magazines ever since I was a kid, and Readly brings you some of the best magazines in the most convenient way, straight to your phone, tablet, or even your desktop PC. And you get unlimited access to over 5,000 magazines, and you can read as many as you like for one set price just $7.99 a month. They're kind of like the Netflix of magazines, and you can do family sharing with titles on everything you could imagine, fashion, lifestyle, education, health, technology, and lots more. There is something for everyone with bookmarking and offline reading. So that means you can even read them when you haven't got signal and never miss a magazine again. You can check out back issues of your favorite magazines all without the fuss of a long-term contract. And because you watch my channel, I know that you like your retro gaming and technology, and there are some amazing mags on here, including the wonderful Retro Gamer magazine, which I've been reading for over 15 years. And it's amazing to be able to read it on here anywhere you go without having to put a magazine in your bag or take up space in your room. And they've even got the new version of Zap64 and Crash on here as well. And if you want to keep up to date with what's going on in technology right now, there are other mags I've read for years on here as well, including the brilliant T3. And I've been loving Classic Pop Presents recently, deep diving into some legendary artists and music genres, definitely worth a read. So you need to check out Readly for yourself and unlock all of these incredible titles. And you know me, I've got you an amazing offer. So do not miss out on this. Click the link in this video's description and you will get an entire two months Readly subscription for free. And then it's just $7.99 a month after the two months has ended that of course can be canceled at any time. So give it a try and a big thank you to Readly for their support of my channel. Okay, so here we are on the Arca OS desktop for the very first time now. I just wanna say before I get into exploring this in a bit more detail and giving you a bit of a tour, you know, learning my way around it really, um, that is what this video is gonna be. It's gonna be me as a new user to Arca OS exploring it as I haven't got a background with OS2. I didn't use it back in the day. I've been playing around with OS2 Warp and Ecom Station in VirtualBox over the last couple of days. But apart from that, my experience with OS2 goes no further. So I'm far from an expert. And I know there'll be people watching this video who've uh, used OS2 for like 
35 years who um, know it like the back of their hand, probably screaming at me as I get terminology wrong and that kind of thing, that is going to happen. I don't really know this operating system. So really, we're looking at this with a fresh pair of eyes and exploring it as a brand new user. But I thought I'd just get that out there at the start before the inevitable comments. So we're, here we are on the desktop, which I think is actually called the uh, the Workplace Shell. So I've done a bit of research. Um, that's the name of the graphical user interface that is carried over from OS2. And my first impressions are that it looks really nice. You know, we haven't got much clutter here. It's a very clean looking user interface with um, some nice looking default icons here. We have a, a taskbar down the bottom and a start menu over here where you'd expect to find it in the, uh, the bottom left of the screen or maybe the X button, judging by the little pop-up that appeared over it there. That might be what it's called. But again, I mean, if you're coming from something like Windows or really any Linux distro these days, you're going to be able to find your way around all these navigational tools really simple. Um, one thing that really jumped out to me on first boot is that we have these six different virtual workspaces, which you can flip between using this widget that actually appears on boot. And again, this is something I saw using OS2 Warp and Ecom Station, so it's been in OS2 for a long time. But to demo that, if I open the computer icon here, you'll see that computer appears in there. And then if I drag that to the right of the screen, I can click on the next workspace and uh, carry it over. So there's nothing revolutionary about that. But the thing about it is having that so in your face in the corner of the graphical user interface when you boot, obviously, it's built into a lot of other operating systems. But usually, I find that the virtual workspaces are kind of buried on some obscure keyboard shortcut, or it might be a small menu item in the top corner of the screen. Having it really prominently displayed by default down here and giving you these six virtual desktops gives you a lot of real estate. And I think it makes it probably you're going to be more likely to use it having it so obvious. So um, I think that's a very nice move, actually. Now, anyone that's used Windows before is going to find the uh, desktop very familiar. Again, like I mentioned, we've got computer there, which is, you know, like my computer in Windows. You've got the Network Explorer there as well with um, you know, some extra tools in there. Trash can, which um, recycle bin on Windows. One thing I'll find is um, when using this, if you come from a Windows background, <laughs> there is one thing that might take some time to adjust to. Now, that is the window gadgets here. Now, we have three of them in the top right corner. Obviously, on Windows, clicking the last one is what you'd normally use to close a window. Um, although, in Arca OS, clicking it actually maximizes the window. And then the next one minimizes it down to the, the taskbar there. To close a window, it is the first gadget, which is a window with a line through it, you know, which makes sense. You click that and the windows vanish, um, which obviously isn't a problem. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just the way that this operating system does it. But, you know, having used Windows for so long <laughs> when recording this, uh, you know, I've had a couple of attempts at doing this. Um, I kept clicking that over and over again, trying to close windows. You know, it's just kind of muscle memory. Um, it's just a different way of doing things. But yeah, that is probably something that will catch you out if you're used to the way that Windows does things. Another thing I noticed as well that could be something I'm doing wrong, but actually um, navigating and moving files around was a bit different. So if we go into drives here, you can see um, the drives that this machine recognizes. Um, again, the same naming convention as Windows. We have an A drive there, B, which would be floppy drives if I had them on this machine. C is um, the disk drive inside the machine. And then if I try to um, move a file, for example, I've got a few um, files I've downloaded. Um, I should go to the home folder here. Um, then I've got downloads there. So there should be a couple of files that I've downloaded from the internet in here, um, which don't appear to be showing now. Go back into there, maybe. Oh, there we go. So yeah, if I want to move, say, for example, um, this file here into the Downloads folder, normally on most operating systems, I could click on it, and then I could just drag and drop it into the place I want it to go. I can't get that working in Arca OS to move files around. The only way that I could figure out how to do it from the desktop was to right click on the file I want to move, uh, go to Pickup, and that get, changes the icon to um, this little pointer here that I can then click on the destination I want to move it to, click in there, right click, and then go to drop, and that will move the file. So I do find that a bit cumbersome. I mean, there might be a way, I mean, I've tried right clicking it or, you know, double clicking with both buttons. I've tried middle clicking. I can't see any other way to actually physically 
drag and drop files without having to go through all those menu items, which, um, yeah, I thought was a little bit fiddly. It would be nice just to have drag and drop, but, you know, maybe that's the way that OS2 has done things for years and, you know, all these users are used to it. But it would be nice to have the option. Maybe it's buried somewhere in the preferences. But, yeah, out of the box, that's the only way that I could find to... Um, move programs around so that did uh <laughs> did require a little bit of figuring out um for me to do that so we'll close all these down now um, we'll check out a few of the um bundled programs in here as well now you can go from the start menu down here as i mentioned so um desktop which actually gives you a link to the uh the directories that you've got here so if we go to programs that kind of gives me a, a directory view of what you'd find in here so there's just two ways of accessing it, really. Um, so we'll go into um, so look at install software first of all. Um, we have a few tools in here. We've got Firefox installed by default, um, which obviously is a mainstream web browser that you know is nice to see in here. I'm not sure how old this version of Firefox is. Um, the icon obviously looks like Firefox from a few years ago. So we'll double click that and give it a launch. And um, I haven't got a Wi-Fi adapter connected to this machine it hasn't got Wi-Fi in installed inside it. So I've got an Ethernet cable plugged in, so I can't really demo how well ArcOS connects to Wi-Fi networks in this video, but um, let's see if it works on here, connected via Ethernet. Yeah, we're getting the um, results here. Yeah, so appears to be connected to the internet working uh, just fine here in Firefox. See how old this version is, because it does look a few years old, the UI. Version 45.9. You know, I know Firefox is definitely further ahead than that now. I'm not a Firefox user these days. You know, I've been Chrome for pretty much the last decade. Um, Firefox 45.9 was that release date. Let's see when that came out. So that was 2017. So yeah, I mean, you're talking to browser this. You know, it's a few years old now, um, but probably won't have that many issues on modern websites. Let's try one of my YouTube videos, um, which is always a good test on an alternative operating system, as I found, you know, using stuff like Morph OS and Haiku and React OS recently. One thing that those operating systems tend to struggle with is YouTube. You know, that's always a good test of a browser in an alternative operating system. So we'll try my uh, recent PyStorm video. Okay, should we get it started? Yeah, and it appears to be working fine in here. We've got the advert there. We'll skip through that. And there we go. Here is my video from a few months ago about the PyStorm. So, um, yeah, it appears to be playing just fine in here. So that is actually um, a big bonus, you know, compared to most alternative operating systems. Again, having Firefox, I think, really helps there. Um, so that is obviously a big bonus, having a mainstream browser that, you know, sites like YouTube recognize. Because normally on alternative operating systems, you have to spoof it as Mozilla or Chrome or something like that. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's playing all right here. A little bit slow, but you got to remember this machine is 10 years old, so I wouldn't expect it to fly on YouTube even running Windows or Linux. And we can do the uh, cinema mode. That appears to be all right. Can we do full screen? And we're going to be using a program called WinSCP. Yeah, appears to be working fine. So, um, yeah. Past the and YouTube then, test with their flying colors there. So um, very good first impression here. Now, there could be a newer version of uh, may maybe Firefox or another web browser available. This is the one that's installed out of the box in the current edition of Arca OS. But, you know, first impression there, the fact that YouTube works, um, <laughs> I think most things probably will after that. So uh, nice to see that in there. Um, what else do we have? We have some DVD tools um, yeah, for authoring DVDs by the looks of it. We have a document viewer called a Lucid. Um, it's just like PDF view, that kind of thing, it looks like. Yeah, PDF, yeah, it's PDF view, so it's always handy to have included in an operating system. Um, a calculator, a yeah, nice scientific-ish calculator. So again, all the things you'd expect to find bundled with any operating system. Um, it looks like a VNC client's in there as well. Uh, remote desktop, so you can connect to you know, Windows machines. Thunderbird, again, another Mozilla product, so um, good to see a mainstream Mail client in here, which I imagine, you know, will connect to your, your Gmails and that kind of thing and your Outlook servers. Um, they all open in separate windows as well by default, not in the same window. So it does mean that your your screen can get quite cluttered quite quickly, as you're seeing here. Um, let's try the multimedia folder and that kind of ages, you know, OS2 multimedia. That is such a mid-90s buzzword, isn't it? And we look, um, look in here, we have, um, yeah, some CD audio players. We've got a media player, uh, a movies folder. Okay. And I guess we have a default um, video player. So double click that, see if that works. Very small. Should we make that bigger? Yeah, there we go. Let's look at some uh, space nebulas and stuff flying through. 
Yeah, it's playing really smoothly in here. That's an MPEG file. Um, so yeah, the default video viewer looking good. And again, you know, it's kind of got that um, mid nineties kind of theme to it. Everything kind of had like marble or brushed metal kind of um, appearance back then, didn't it? That was very hot back in the mid nineties. So yeah, nothing too exciting, but nice to have a media player included out of the box here as well. We have a few sounds in there too. Um, wave format and some MIDI files as well. Let's try applause. There you go. And that actually played through my headphones here. Um, so I'm hoping you heard that on the video. Again, that is one thing that um, I did read the Arca OS can sometimes, it's got like a, a default audio driver that doesn't necessarily work with all machines, but it appears to have just worked out the box on this um, Fujitsu PC. So that's good to see. Um, <laughs> some great sound effects in here. That is one thing I remember actually when playing around with OS2 Warp, that everything made a sound effect on that. You opened the window, it whistled, you minimized it, everything you did in the GUI made a sound effect, which um, got really annoying after a while. So it is good to see them kind of tone that down in Arca OS, you know, it's not just uh, making sounds all the time, but there are quite a selection in here. So maybe there is a way to make it do that. Um, with some MIDI files in there as well, um, which don't appear to open in anything. I see something called MIDI there. Uh, maybe I can open them in here. Okay, didn't make a sound there. The device driver cannot be opened or the required hardware is missing. But it did play a, a sound there, didn't it? Okay, I think that's the error sound it's playing there. Maybe one of those uh, old OS2 warp sound effects. Maybe you need actual MIDI hardware to play those or maybe some more configuration of the, the sound device or something. But yeah, the, the support is in there by the looks of it as well. Um, let's go to utilities that we've got in here. Um, an archive tool. Um, which looks like it's for you, opening your, your zip files and that kind of thing. Um, a character map, always useful if you're uh, struggling to find something on a keyboard shortcut, you know, copy and paste them from there. Uh, clipboard viewer, yeah, nothing on the clipboard at the moment. Um, CPU monitor, um, yeah, quite high CPU usage by the looks here, up to 100 just from this. Uh, again, like I said, it's an old machine. Um, drag text between windows, I like a yeah, like a clipboard kind of thing, I guess. Uh, icon editor. And this is cool. So I can open an icon. Um, that one, oh, yeah, okay. So this is kind of something I used to do on the Amiga quite a bit, actually, make my own icons or um, actually, you know, do some customization to the included ones. Looks like we have a, a, a bitmap graphics editor here that we can just uh, mess around with the icon file so we can make our own, you know, ch change the screen into, a, into night mode, you know, dark modes everywhere these days. So, yeah, very cool to have an an actual icon editor bundled with it as well. That's more of them sound effects. <laughs> I jinxed it by saying there wasn't any in here. Uh, Metafile viewer, yeah, I'm not sure what that one is. Um, looks like that's a search for files tool. Uh, a text editor, of course you need a text editor in any operating system. Looks quite nice as well, quite similar to Notepad on Windows by the looks of it. Uh, discard that. Toolbar, okay, we can, uh, looks like a dock that we can have down there at the bottom of the screen. I think I'll leave that there, looks quite nice. Um, some problem determination tools, you know, kind of debugging and that kind of thing, which we won't go into here. Um, got a couple of games installed by default. Um, okay. Uh, well, I definitely need hints. Wow. <laughs> a version of Solitaire that I've definitely never seen before and looks uh, way too complicated for me. Um, yeah, I can't make it do anything. Oh, there we go. Did something. Yeah, more hints, please. Yeah, I think we will uh, we'll come out of that. Um, what other games did we have in there? With chess? Yeah, you need a good chess uh, chess program. 3D chess by the looks of it. Can we go? Yeah, we can rotate that around. That's pretty cool. Some nice sound effects again. <laughs> so yeah, you know, nice to have a chess program included. Um, and a yeah, more traditional kind of... Oh, with the OS2 logo on these as well. That's quite interesting, actually. Some parts of um, Arca OS seem to be branded OS2. I guess these are probably legacy applications that are from the um, the original OS2. Yeah, this one's from 1996 by IBM, so it looks like this is um, just, you know, a straight drag and drop from the old uh, OS2 warp um, setup back then, so nothing updated there. But it is cool to see that actually it just works by, you know, clicking on it. You don't have to do anything extra to get the old legacy applications running here. So um, we've got a development folder as well with the Rex console. I did briefly touch on Rex on the intro and that, um, you know, if you want to read more about Rex, I'll link up the Wikipedia article 
in the video description. That was also an Amiga OS as well, ABREX, which is a really powerful scripting language that you can actually make full-blown programs with. And also a lot of programs have what are called Rex ports, so you can make them kind of interact with each other as well. Um, a really, really powerful language. And uh, yeah, I think it actually originated in OS2. So we have the console there that I imagine is asking me to uh, locate a Rex file to, to load. Um, <laughs> Another nice sound effect. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't know where they are, but you know, that's obviously included here as well, if you want it. Okay, so we have some, um, these look like the uh, the control panel slash preferences section here, um, down here in the taskbar, icon themes. High resolution desktop icons are currently active. Okay. Right, so we're on um, the Arca OS theme now. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's actually got themes from, uh, the older OS2 warp versions in here. So uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want that kind of, that retro look, um, looks like you can enable it there. Let's try that one, that's quite nice. Why not? You'll need to reboot for the changes to take effect. Oh, okay. Slightly excessive, but um, let's give it a reboot. It doesn't take long. I'm interested to see how this looks. And there we go. <laughs> the icon theme looking like it's a, uh, straight out of 1996 by the looks of it so uh just the way i like it yeah it's pretty cool um a bit annoying that it requires a reboot but you know it didn't take very long um anything else we can check out in here we have a hardware manager as well for you know managing all your drivers and that kind of thing by the looks of it um network adapters uh loads of different fonts that are installed by default here too and we have a package manager included in Arca OS as well, which is nice to see. And you know, it gives you, um, as a new user, a really simple way uh, to not only see what you've got installed on your system, but also extra programs and third-party software that's easily downloadable rather than having to you know, trawl the web and find obscure websites with one or two files on. You can just open the package manager here. And uh, if you want to download something, you know, it gives you a little description here on uh, what each one is. Um, Okay, so just click in them and then uh, hit an install and it will also download all the uh, dependencies that you need as well. So we click on that and really it's as simple as, you know, just point and click um, and it should be kept up to date with the latest versions of these programs as well. So I'm always a big fan of package managers. I think, you know, particularly for new users, it does um, save a lot of headaches and uh, it's good for developers as well. You know, it means that they can put their software in front of everyone that's using the platform. Now, something very cool about Arca OS, as I mentioned in the video introduction, is its ability to run legacy software. Now, if you watch my channel, you're probably into your retro stuff. So this is something that's included out of the box and I think is extremely cool. Now, if I go into um, this little menu option here, we have a few different um, sessions that we can launch. One of them here is Win OS 2 Session Full Screen. So I click on that and as you can see, it launches what is essentially Windows 3.1. Now, I didn't have to set this up manually. I didn't have to uh, find Windows files. I didn't have to mess around with a virtual machine because, you know, Windows 3.1 can actually be a bit of a headache to get working on um, a lot of the, the virtual machine suites out there. But this is just installed out of the box. And I've actually installed um, a couple of old Windows programs. Like we have a version of uh, Microsoft Office here from, I think this is 1993. So I can click on that. And as you can see, that launches, you know, just like it would have back in the day about Microsoft Word. Um, yeah, Word version six we're running here from uh, 1984 actually, sorry. So um, I remember using this at school when I was a kid. And uh, this works flawlessly in here. So you might be thinking, why would you want to use a you know 25 year old word processor? But the point is that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of industry might have old machines and old hardware that have got custom um, installed applications on there that they want to move to more modern hardware. This is a really good way of doing it. So um, if I come out of this here, been a long time since I used Windows 3.1. Um, I've also installed uh, something else you might remember from your school days, Microsoft Encarta. Now, if I double click that, it's asking me for a CD-ROM. So what I can do here is, I'll click on OK there. We'll go to the desktop icon that says OS2 on it there. And that'll take me back to the Arca OS desktop. And then I've got something here called um, ISO FS file system that allows me to mount ISO files as a virtual CD-ROM drive. So if I double click that, I click on add, um, find the file. So I download that into the, uh, the temp folder. Let me quickly find that for you. Um, and there we have yeah, Microsoft Encarta, and there is the disk image. So I click on OK, we'll mount that. 
we'll get a message down here saying it's now available for use. Then if I click back to my Windows 3.1 session and we'll try Encarta again, and there we go. Microsoft Encarta 1994 edition in all of its school library glory. And uh, yeah, we can go to the contents there. Um, <laughs> MS-DOS remembers where I was last time, actually. We don't search for MS-DOS, do we? Let's have a look for uh, OS2. There we go. And you can uh, waste hours in here, just like we did in that pre-internet era, um, looking at all kinds of things in Microsoft Encarta. So again, I mean, the fact that CD-ROM titles work with very minimal effort in here, I do think it's very cool having this um, full old school Windows 3.1 install in here, you know, even for like um, retro software enthusiasts and retro gamers, you know, it is a completely headache free way of um, just running these old applications with minimum fuss. So nice to see that in here. So we can come out of here now, um, exit one OS two, that will just drop me back on the Alcro OS desktop. And it isn't just Windows applications from back in the day that you can run in here as well, we actually have a full DOS compatibility mode in here too. So if I click on um, DOS session full screen, this will take me into, um, you know, essentially PC DOS, MS DOS. If I do um, all the usual DOS commands that you know, um, and I've actually got one of my favorite DOS games installed here, which is um, the legendary Prince of Persia. So I can launch that just as you would on um, a classic PC. And as you can see, this incredible game launched with no DOS bug setup, nothing like that. Um, literally just ran the program. And um, I've even got PC speaker audio coming out of this um, Fujitsu PC, which um, appears to have a built-in speaker, it seems. So um, yeah, just as it would have on a, an old 286 or whatever you played this on back in the day. And as you can see, you now runs really nicely on here. Um, so if you want to play DOS games and stuff, you know, and you don't want to go through all the, the headache of setting up virtual machines and DOS box and that kind of thing, they work completely fine straight out of the box in Arcro OS. And to quit them, you just press um, Control and Escape. And just before we start to wrap this video up, um, obviously we've tested out some legacy Microsoft um, DOS and Windows applications there. I thought we'd quickly try out um, a couple of classic OS2 programs. We saw a couple of them that are bundled with the, with the operating system, but obviously they're tested. Um, I thought it might be a bit more adventurous to try a game from back in the day. So I've got Another World, which is one of my favorite action adventure games from the early 90s. And um, this is the original OS2 version that came out back then. And again, this should run completely fine just by double clicking it. We shouldn't have to set anything up or configure anything. So if I double click on um, the executable file there, is it going to work? There we go. Interplay logo comes up. Um, and it appears to be running just fine. Yeah, 1991 out of this world, as it was called in uh, some parts of the world. I know this is another world. And we can make it full screen. Um, and I remember, you know, this used to give me goosebumps watching this um, introduction animation on the, the Amiga and the Super Nintendo back in the day, what I used to play this on. So, yeah, I mean, I think obviously there wasn't a big gaming scene on OS2. But it is a good demo to show games running uh, on these kind of things because games were very demanding and obviously a lot of them kind of took advantage of certain hardware. So really, if, you know, if a game runs well, you can pretty much be rest assured that most things probably should work on here. So yeah, this piece will be playing fine. Can I skip the intro and get into the game? Yeah, there he is, swimming up. Lester, I think his name was. There, yeah, and we can walk. And uh, yeah, get killed by the killer slugs. But yeah, no, so a legacy OS2 game working completely fine in Arca OS. I also downloaded Doom, um, the original shareware version for um, OS2 as well. Um, they obviously made for a smaller screen resolutions than I've got here, dating from, you know, the early 90s. And wow, yeah, that runs really quickly. <laughs> Can I make this full screen? Maybe there is a way. Hold an enter, I'm not sure. Your game. I'm going then. Nightmare. Of course. Not going to work. Yep. Playing really smoothly, you know, as you'd expect. It's not a demanding game for a modern system. But again, you know, this is a legacy OS2 game from the early 90s, um, running without any fuss directly in Arca OS. So, uh, you know, it appears if you want to run these uh, classic games, you know, if you're a bit of a retro gamer or something like that, or but you've got legacy applications that you want to run, this is a really simple way of doing it. Admittedly, um, you've got to pay for a license, so more expensive than doing it yourself, but it does all appear to work flawlessly in here. 
So that's been a quick look at Arca OS, but is it worth using? Well, obviously, I mean, you might have assessed from this video that it's not aiming to replace Windows or modern Linux distributions. Really, as I've kind of touched on a bit in this video, I think this is actually designed for companies who are tied to legacy OS2, DOS, or Windows 16-bit applications who want a more modern way to continue using those systems without the expense of having to start over. And actually, there is quite a big market for that, especially with industrial customers who've got old custom-based software that is still working fine, but running on aging hardware. And this gives them a chance to keep running it, but on modern systems. But outside of that, Arca OS does have fans in longtime OS2 users, and those of us who want a really easy way to run retro software and games on modern PCs. I love the fact that it's got that Windows 3.1 environment in there, and the seamless integration of DOS, and the fact you can run OS2 software from back in the day, that makes it really interesting for those of us that are really into vintage computing. And outside of that, you can actually do quite a lot of modern computing tasks on here as well, having, you know, Firefox, and there could well be a more modern web browser available for it. I haven't really dived into that, but the version of Firefox from a couple of years ago played YouTube fine. I was able to sign into my Google Drive and stuff on here as well. So you can do a lot of modern computing web-based stuff on here. And that said, a lot of the classic applications still do the job today. I mean, I probably can't think of a new feature that I've used in Microsoft Word for about 20 years now. So I've really enjoyed using Arca OS. I'm going to keep it installed on this machine. I'm going to continue to use it regularly and learn more about it and follow its developments as well. If you want to read more about it, I will, of course, link up their official website and some forums and places you could check out in this video's description. If you've got any memories of OS2 or maybe you're an Arca OS user, I would love to hear your memories and experiences. Please do leave a comment in this video. And just a quick reminder that I do a weekly retro gaming and technology podcast. New episodes available every Friday, and you can get it from your usual podcast client, ask your smart speaker to play the Retro Hour podcast, or head to our website at theretrohour.com, and we are joined by veterans of the industry for a special interview on each week's show. So have a look back. You're bound to find some you're going to find interesting. And while you're here on YouTube, here are another couple of videos I think you might enjoy. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.